What's up, E? Okay, we are gonna talk today. Let me get hydrated. All right, I'm gonna be taking sips. I just had a little coughing fit. So this went down the wrong pipe. But today, we are talking about fourth wing. Fourth fucking wing. Uh, this book. I got the first edition with the printed uh, edges. So, sorry y'all, but I had to do it. I, as soon as I saw this book getting five-star reviews, I was like, snag. Um, I can see why it got five-star reviews. I gave it a five-star review. Um, this book, dude. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. So freaking good. If you don't have it in your hands yet to read, you need to get it as soon as possible. I heard there's like a month, two month long wait uh, for the next edition to come out. The first edition copy with the printed edge is sold out everywhere. You're not going to find it unless you find it like on eBay for price gouging prices and stuff like that. This book is so good. Like I said, I gave it five stars. So, let me read the back and then I'll give my own little synopsis. And then um, we can talk. This video is going to have spoilers. So, if you didn't read that in the title, stop now. Because this is going to be spoiler, spoiler, spoiler vlog. Um, I'm going to talk about spoilers. Um, I'm going to talk about the ending. So, if you don't want to hear that, skip now. Um... Okay, a dragon without its rider is a tragedy. A rider without their dragon is dead. Article 1, Section 1, the Dragon, the dragon Rider's Codex. Anyone else feel like changing their minds? Zayden shouts, uh, scanning the remaining rows of cadets with the same shrewd gaze at, of the navy blue dragon behind him. No? Excellent. Roughly half of you will be dead by this time next summer. The formation is silent except for a few untimely sobs from my left. A third of you again the year after that and the same year last year. No one cares who your mommy and daddy is here. Even if King Tari's uh, second son died, even King Tari's second son died during his threshing. So tell me again, do you feel invincible now that you made it to the writer's quadrant? Untouchable? Elite? No one cheers. Another blast of heat rushes, this time at my face. Every muscle, muscle in my body clenches, preparing for incineration. But not its flames. Just steam and, it's, uh, and it blows back Rhiannon's braids in as the dragon... Ugh, I can't read out loud. As the dragons finish their si uh, simultaneous exhale. The breaches of the first year ahead of me darken the color spreading down his legs they want us scared mission accomplished because you're not untouchable or special to them zayden points toward the navy dragon and leans forward slightly he like he's just letting us in on a secret as we look lock eyes to them you're just the prey so that's not really a synopsis that's an excerpt here here's the synopsis enter the brutal and elite world uh of a war college for dragon riders from the USA Today best-selling author Rebecca Yaros. 20-year-old Violet Sorengale was supposed to enter the scribe, scribe quadrant, living a quiet life among books and history. Now the commanding general, also known as her toughest talons mother, has ordered Violet to join the hundreds of candidates surviving or striving to become the elite of Navarre dragon riders. But when you're smaller than everyone else and your body is brittle, death is only a heartbeat away because dragons don't bond to fragile humans. They incinerate them. With fewer dragons willing to bond than cadets, most will kill Violet better than their most will kill Violet to better their own chances of survival success. Oh, I suck at reading out loud. Please excuse me. The rest would kill her for being her mother's daughter, like Zayden Ryerson, the most powerful and ruthless wing leader in the writer's quadrant. 
She'll need every edge her wits can give her just to see the next sunrise. Yet with every day that passes, the war outside grows more deadly and the kingdom's protective wards are failing and the death toll continues to rise. Even worse, Violet begins to suspect leadership is hiding a terrible secret. Friends, enemies, lovers, everyone at Basgaith um, War College has an agenda because once you enter, there are only two ways out, graduate or die. So, okay, so that's the synopsis. I'll give my own little synopsis. So, like it said, Violet Sorengale, she's 20 years old. She goes to this, like, um, military, like, fantasy dragon college um, to train to be a dragon rider. She wants to be in the squi scribe quadrant, which is, like, taking care of the archives and the library, um... They wear, like, these hoods and everything. It's all fireproof and everything to keep the papers and books and uh, just basically, like, archives um, of history in this land um, safe from burning up or being destroyed and stuff like that. And it's a really important quadrant. Um, but her mom is, like, the shrewd military leader. Um, and she's like, no, you... If you're a Sworn Gale, you will be a dragon rider. Um, so she goes uh, to the first day of... She, like, goes through these challenges and everything. And there's, like, challenge after challenge. And um, she makes it through all of them. And she stays alive the whole book. There's no, like, dying for her in this book. Um, Poor Liam, though. Liam dies. Uh, but Liam doesn't come until about halfway through the book. And I was like, no, bitch. I do not want to see a dragon die. And then Liam and his dragon die. And I'm like, bitch, no. I don't want anyone to die. And I swear to God. it. Okay, so... Anyways, it comes to the day when they bond with their dragons. And, like, bonding is, like... Um, like, just, like, what it sounds. It's, like... Uh, the dragon and you become like one. You can talk to each other through your mind and stuff. And um, yeah, it's just like bonding or whatever. And uh, like they become a piece of you and you become a piece of them. And uh, you learn to ride them and everything like that. Um, so, excuse me. Um, so, um, Violet goes one day and uh the dragons line up and there's this gold dragon and it's really small um it has paws and not claws it's really small it's very shiny people are making fun of it calling it weak other dragons incinerate people saying that but then these three people um they see the dragon and they're like it's the weak link we have to kill it they're gonna kill the dragon i'm like no bitch what kind of evil bitch are you that you're gonna kill the dragon like, kill the smallest dragon. Like, that dragon is special. It's gold. None of the other dragons are gold. It's a feather tail dragon. Like, how are you going to kill a special dragon? Like, make it make sense. Um, so, uh, they go to kill the uh, dragon. Her name's Andarna, but you don't learn that until a little bit later. Um, and then, uh, so, Violet goes and, like, throws her daggers at them and like tries to battle them uh, because they're trying to kill this dragon. And then the big dragon, uh, Tarn, um, comes and incinerates two of them. I, two of them? One of them? I don't know. He kills one of them, I think. Um, but the other, or does he kill two? I don't know. Um, I think he kills one because um, Orin ends up working unbonded with a dragon in the cafeteria and then he tries to attack Violet in his sleep with other people and then they um kill uh Zayden kills him by breaking his neck um and Zayden kills him because Zayden and Violet end up bonding together because um okay so I'm getting all over the place um so Violet ends up bonding with this big black dragon that comes in and incinerates the people with his fire breathing. Um, 
Uh, so she bonds with him, but then she bonds with another dragon. And there's like unheard of in history of a rider bonding with two dragons. So I'm like, oh my God, Violet's special, y'all. Um, so I just love this book. Okay, so um, Violet ends up having two dragons and they're like, oh my God, you can't do this. Like, no, you have to choose. And even her best friend, Dane, is like, you have to choose. You can't have two dragons. And then uh, the, like, um, military personnel, like, come together and they're like, hey, dragon rules are dragon rules. Like, we don't control the dragons. They, like, work, they don't work for us. We work for them, you know? Um, so, uh, it's like dragon's rules, um, so, uh, Violet gets two dragons, and Darna, the gold dragon, and Taren, um, the black dragon, who's, like, the big dragon and, like, one of the most fiercest dragons. Well, Taren and Seagal, um, Seagal is a female dragon. They're actually mating. They're, like, mating together. So, Zayden, who on the first day is, like, really hard on Violet and really hard on her, but then he, like, softens up, um, and, like, helps her out and stuff like that. Like, when they're, um, wrestling together or fighting together or whatever, he's, like, giving her tips and pointers and stuff and, like, calling her out on her, um, bullshit and stuff like that. Um, and then, um, he ends up being, like, well, so, because I am Seagal's rider and you are Taryn's rider and they're mating, we're stuck together for life. And they have sex. And uh, there's a couple of spicy scenes. So, just so you know, there are some spicy scenes. Um, I don't mind spice, but a lot of people do, like, kind of, like, grow up. Um, but that's just my opinion. Um, but there are some spicy scenes, which I appreciate. I love an adult, spicy romantic fantasy, fiction, whatever. Um, I like the spice. I think it's, like, real world. Um, so, um, yeah, Violet ends up having to, um, bond, or, like, mate, or not even bond or mate, but, like, date Zayden, because they're stuck together for life anyway. Uh, so they end up becoming boyfriend, girlfriend, or whatever. Um, but, yeah. And then I can kind of move on to, like, the battle scenes and stuff. There's lots of, um, use of their dragons. And then at, towards the end, there's a big battle. Um, she thinks they're fighting, like, the Griffins in these war games. Like, it's a setup of, um, like, pretending to be war, like, within the college. Um, and it's like, you know, a scrimmage, like a fake war. But anyway since Dane betrays her and, like, touches her face and, like, reads her memories, he gets that power from his dragon that he bonded with. Um, he ends up telling his dad, who's, like, a sergeant or general or whatever, um, that, um, Zayden is, they have these things called rebellion reddicks. They're, like, tattoos. And, um, the ones with rebellion reddicks are, like, um, the children of the people who rebelled and then they killed all the rebels and um, their children had to enroll in the college and Zayden was in charge of all of them um, to make sure they all went to the college and succeeded as dragon riders and like stayed loyal to the military. Um, but anyway, so apparently Zayden has been giving weapons to um, the, uh, um, what are they called? The Griffin, right? Griffin Riders? Griffin Flyers. Yeah. The Griffin Flyers, which dragons and griffins are supposed to be like mortal enemies. Like that's who, when dragons go to war with, they go to war with the Griffins and the Griffin Flyers and stuff. Um, so, like I said, this is all, like, fantasy, mythical creature kind of thing, which I dig. Like, I love it. Um, I'm definitely getting into fantasy, and this was, um, I read Akatar, and then this was the next book I read, and this was, like, a great place to start. Um, so, uh, the Griffin Riders are like, no, we need these weapons to actually kill, um, the Vernon? Is it Vernon? 
Hold on, let me look. Um, I forgot how to pronounce it. I listened to the audiobook and read along. Um, so, let me look. Sorry. I think it's Vernon. Vermin? It's not Vermin, but Vernon. Vermin? Vemrin? Vinrin? Vemrin? I don't know. But there's, like, these creatures that, like, suck the magic out of the land and, like, use it for themselves. And they have, like, red veins going across them and, like, it goes into their eyeballs and stuff like that. And they're, like, these evil creatures. And then they make these things called wyvern, which are, like, false dragons. But they live off of their power. So the only way they can die is through these weapons that have runes on them. And they're, like, ancient runes. They don't use the runes anymore. But everyone thinks these creatures are mythical. Um, but they've tried to just like erase the thought of them out of memory. Like uh, Violet's dad gave her this book. Um, that um, she had when she was little. Um, but they talk about the vermin and wyvern and stuff like that. And um, Sorry, I'm trying to think. There's a lot in this book. This book is like 500 pages. Um, but like, as you can see, there's lots of words per page and stuff like that. And I read it over three days. So it's like, if I read it just in one day, I would get it. Um, but there were like breaks in between. I know, that's a lot to read in one day. I probably couldn't do it. Um, but the audiobook is 20 hours long. I listened to it 1.75 speed. I probably could have slowed it down to like 1.25, 1.5 to like better digest it. Um, but I like listening to audiobooks on a little sped up speed, um, to prevent me from reading ahead and then losing my spot and then having to backtrack and stuff like that. So I like to listen to it a little sped up and also to meet my reading goals and stuff. So, um... So yeah, uh, where was I at? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, so the wyvern can only be killed by these weapons and Zayden and the Rebellion Relic uh, students have been giving the Griffin Flyers weapons to kill the wyvern in the Barrens is where um, they live, but they're like destroying cities and stuff and like taking power um, from people and cities and the land and stuff like that. Um, so... Um, uh, they end up, like, Violet ends up feeling betrayed because she's like, why didn't you tell me? And she's like, no, I'm on your side, you know. Um, uh, I believe you, but I really wish you wouldn't have lied to me. So there's kind of that between her and Zayden. And, um, uh, anyway, there's a final battle scene. Lots of action. Action fucking packed. Uh, like I said, Liam and his dragon dies, which is really sad. I teared up quite a few times in this book and then cried at the end, which we'll get to the ending. Um, and then, uh, um, basically, like, they end up killing all the wyvern that are battling. There's still more, so this is supposed to be, like, a five-book series, so I'm sure there will be more action with the wyvern and Vernon and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, they can only be killed by these weapons and they end up having enough weapons and joining teams with, uh, the Griffin Flyers, um, to kill them and, uh, their leaders, the leader of the, um, uh, Vernon is like the sage. So, uh, they end up killing the sage and all the wyvern like die with him um so um then at the end okay so the whole time we're to think that violet's brother died in war um and he was a healer he was a writer too he went through all of that um and the whole time we're thinking like okay he's dead like if violet dies her sister mira will be an only child and stuff like that and then um Violet ends up getting stabbed with this, like, unknown poison. It makes her blood black. She passes out. And they bring her to a land that they were told in Navarra that 
which is like their city or whatever, um, where the college is, um, that, uh, that land had been destroyed. And she's like, what happened here? And they're like, we're rebuilding. Um, so she's like, okay, well, um, and then they have a discussion about like lies and stuff. And then they're like, um, they bring in Brennan, her brother, and he had healed her. Oh, I'm getting the chills just thinking about it. And he's like, welcome to the revolution. And then the book fucking ends. I'm like, no, oh my God, I need the next book. First of all, I pre-ordered the next book already. It's called Iron Flame and it comes out in November. I'm going to get that shit in the mail read it and be like posting that review because I'm like, oh my God, I want to be like the first one to read it because I love this book so fucking much. I really do. It is so fucking good. Like I said, I gave it five stars. If you like fantasy, definitely check it out. Uh, this is supposed to be a five book series. Pre-order it because I'm sure uh, all the first editions are going to have the printed edges. So, um, if you have a printed edge one, uh, a fourth wing, you're definitely going to want all the printed edges in your collection. So you definitely want to um, pre-order all of them uh, as they come out. The only Iron Flame is available for pre-order right now. And if you don't have the printed edges um, on your book, you can buy it, like, on eBay, but that's stupid. Um, so, yeah, that's just my suggestion. But I really liked it. The ending had me shook. Um, I don't think I'm in, like, a book club because I plan on reading my next book today. Um, but this was a really good book. I would read it again. Um, yeah, I really liked it. So, I it comes highly recommended. Definitely worth the hype. Um, can't wait for the next book. Can't wait for the series. Um, so I'm really excited about it. And my favorite character is Andarna, uh, the gold dragon. She's so cute. She's so nice. Uh, she is a hatchling, so she's only two years old. Um, but then after the battle and her power is stopping time. Um, so she stops time a couple of times, but it really like depletes her and wears her out and she sleeps for a few days. Um, but then she loses her power and becomes bigger, like grows up. Um, so uh, Violet doesn't know that yet. But um, when she sees Andarna next, she will like not recognize her because she's going to be so big. Um, but she does use her power and that's how she defeats the sage, uh, Vernon. Um, but yeah, I really like this book. I It comes highly recommended. Please check it out. Um, if you missed out on the first edition copy, don't worry about it. It just won't have printed edges. And that's like, this is the only printed edge book I have in my collection. So it's, I'm not a like first edition collector or anything. I just like books and stories and stuff. Um, so definitely check it out. Rebecca Yaros is a great author. Um, I'm going to check out her romance books because I really thought the writing was pretty cute in this book. Um, a lot of people had concerns and, like, gripes about, um, the writing and, like, uh, the dialogue and stuff. And I'm like, they're like, fantasy books, they don't talk like that. I'm like, you don't make the rules for fantasies. Sorry. Um, so I liked that they talked like millennials, but were in, like, a fantasy land. I thought that was cool. Um, so... I mean, I guess it's just taste. Like, if you want to be cool and, like, not follow the hype of what everyone's talking about, well, go be a hipster and do that. But um, I liked it, and I'm definitely on the bandwagon, and I don't care about liking things that are cool. Um, but, yeah, that is my review. I gave it five stars. Please go check it out. Comment down below if you read it and liked it or plan on reading it. Let's have a discussion in the comments um, about the ending, uh, the pronunciation of the books, if I got anything wrong or anything, because I'm sure I did. Um, but yes, I love this book. I would read it again. I can't wait to have all the series uh, read and on my shelf. This is such a good book, and I can't wait for the next book in November. So uh, like, comment, and 
share, and please, please, please subscribe if you could, please. And I hope you guys have a very happy day. Peace.